So I wrote a second poem about Alan, and it was actually the very first poem that I, that I read back in December of 2010 here at, at the Sacred Grounds. It was called, My Friend Has Fallen Down the Well. My friend has fallen down the well. I try to get him to look upwards to the blue sky, and so do a number of his friends. The media is not interested in his plight, since it has already given national attention to a story like this, and the little girl had better demographics. Still, my friend makes the best of it. He has painted his portion of the well a kind of mango color, and strung out small white lights to create a path to him when it is dark. His girlfriend goes down to visit him, and they have carved out a small space for living down there. He's created tunnels to the nearby market and begun to cultivate a small toothbrush garden out the back. Since it is in Berkeley, it is not so bad living at the bottom of a well. With our eyes opened, we soon realize that we're wells all over Berkeley, and millions more across the country, each having a person at the bottom with or without a toothbrush garden. Still. It is the bottom of a well. Many times his friends have gathered at the well's opening and urged him to climb out. He says he appreciates our sentiments and that he would if he could, but he has fallen down a well. Now, the top of the well has become a social gathering point. His friends gather, sip white wine, and recall the times when he glowed with an aura of bright yellow light. I would say white light, but there was always a tinge, a discoloration, and somehow women found that to be particularly interesting. During those manic times, he would channel the Love and Spoonful song about Coconut Grove or come across some simple but profound realization about the nature of things. We all encourage the return of that yellow light. We hope for it for ourselves almost as much as for him. We remind him that the sky is still blue, except when it is not.